Zane and Vatani, written and illustrated by Cal Covey Smith. Chapter 1 The final days of summer vacation shrouded the atmosphere of Miami, Florida. The jaded kids in the area were not looking forward to another year of school and mountains of homework. But over on 235 Lomac High Drive, there were two 12-year-old twins clashing for the controller to their Xbox One. Knock it off, Fatani. Super Mario Universe is single player only, and I grabbed the controller first. In case you forgot, you spilled iced tea on the other controller playing Fortnite. Besides, I was born first, said Fatani snidely. Only by eight minutes. And remember, I'm taller and stronger, yelled Zane as he began to overpower his cheeky sister. Fatani kept pulling, but then she paused to think for a minute. Oh, hey, Michael, she said, looking over her brother's left shoulder. Zane slightly loosened his grip on the controller and turned around to see his best friend, only for no one to be there. Then Vatani snatched the controller out of his hands. Gotcha, little bro, Vatani gloated. Hey, that's not fair. You tricked me, protested Zane. Girls can't be gamers anyway, and don't call me little. Too bad, so sad. Now beat it. I'm playing on the Xbox now demanded Vatani, as she made a fist at her brother's face. Then the bickering brother and sister's mom, Jasmine Archer, walked into the den to break up the two. V, Zane, both of you stop before I slap the black off both of y'all, yelled Mrs. Archer. Then the two closed their mouths and glared at each other as they knew their mother was not one to make idle threats. Lord, y'all need to learn how to stop fighting so much. I'm doing all I can to provide a nice environment for us, so I expect it to be peaceful, said Mrs. Archer. Mrs. Archer, being a single black mother of two strong-willed twins, as well as being an English professor at the University of Miami, had to be just as tough and focused to keep both her kids and students in line. But mom, I had the controller first, and V just walked up and tried to take it from me, said Zane. Only because you got to play the Xbox all day yesterday, and enough, both of you. I can't wait till school starts in four days, so I don't have to hear this bull crap, explained Mrs. Archer. Now, Zane, you spilled tea on the second controller and made it short circuit, as well as played all day. So find something to do outside like boys are supposed to. Oh, what? said Zane. Don't make me ask again, said Mrs. Archer firmly. Zane reluctantly headed out the front door and turned around to see his sister taunt him by blowing a raspberry. I'll get you later, Batani, whispered Zane as he bitterly went outside. Zane got his bike and mumbled to himself, Batani isn't even a hardcore gamer, and I'm the one who bought Super Mario Galaxy. Hey, Zane. Zane looked back to see his friend Michael approaching on his bike. Oh, hey, Mike. Uh-oh, I know that tone. What went down between you and Vatani this time? asked Michael. V tricked me into thinking you showed up and snatched a controller out of my hand. And my mom let her play the video game I bought when she's not even a gamer. I was going to live stream Super Mario Universe on my YouTube channel, Dragonfire Network, said Zane. Wow, you really let a girl play you like that? replied Michael. You see, right about now, I'd slap you in your head. But you're my bro, so I'm going to let it slide, said Zane. The two made their way to the local park, only to see their Hispanic friend Jose being harassed by the neighborhood bully, Traquel Thomas, whose nickname was Bull, and his gang who were playing keep away with his basketball. Come on, guys, knock it off. Give me back my basketball, por favor, pleaded Jose. We no speak Spanish here, Ese. It's monkey in the middle, bruh. You gotta try and catch it, Traquel mocked. Do you understand what we are saying? Said Ron Travius, the boy in the Miami Heat jersey. Oh, Eddie Guerrero looking ah, said Kendrius. I think he's getting mad, guys. We should not, said Austin. Zane and Michael made their way to the basketball court to help their friend only to see Jose yell his tormentors in frustration. 
All of you are a bunch of cabeza de pingas. The four bullies stood in silence as they glared at Jose, who was shocked he said that out loud. What did you just call us? demanded Jerquil. He grabbed Jose by his throat and started to choke him. Jerquil was a hostile but rather dim-witted boy who was 15 years old but was still in middle school. Quit it, Jerquil, shouted Zane. Jerquil threw Jose to the ground as he and his gang focused their attention on Zane and Michael. Michael helped Jose up and checked on him. Are you okay? asked Michael. Yeah, but they still have my basketball, Jose replied. What you want, Zane? yelled Trey Quayle. Look, Trey Quayle, I don't want to start anything. Just give Jose the basketball. Trey Quayle gave the ball to one of his friends and got in Zane's face. Who this little jet think he's talking to, said Trey Quayle. Y'all are a bunch of losers. Get out of my face, dude. Besides, you shouldn't call anyone losers since you're 15 and still in 8th grade, said Zane boldly. Suddenly, Traquel slapped Zane in the face with his gang jeering him on, along with Michael and Jose staring in shock. Ooh, snap, screamed Traquel's gang. Stop, you can have the basketball, just leave us be, begged Jose. Traquel ignored him and began to mock Zane. You think cause you make an honor roll and wrote books, you think you better than me? Zane retaliated by shoving Trey Quill, who almost lost his balance, but being a bigger boy, he caught himself. I don't think, I know I'm better than you, exclaimed Zane. I smell better too. Trey Quill then tackled Zane to the ground and unleashed a fury of punches to his face. Zane did his best to fight off the older boy, but was outsized and overpowered. While Michael and Jose were aggressively restrained by Bull's gang, who themselves began to scuffle with. Traquel waved a knife in Zane's face and threatened him. I have stabbed your ass like Chucky, but let this be a warning to you. Don't ever screw with me, and it's Bull to you. Take their bikes. Bull's gang grabbed Zane and Michael's bikes with Ron Travius his main follower handing the ringleader Zane's beautiful emerald green bike. Before they left, Bull did a swift cut to Zane's right knee as he and his gang left with one final taunt. Ah! Zane screamed in pain. Pussies! Michael and Jose ignored their items being stolen and rushed to pick up their dazed and hurt friend who had a bruise under his right eye, a bump on his forehead, and a light gash on his left knee. Don't worry, Zane. We'll get you home, said Michael. Hang tight, amigo, said Jose. <coughs> Thanks, guys. The trio gingerly walked the street and arrived at Zane's house with the banged up boy's mother and sister in complete shock. What the heck happened to you? yelled Vatani. He got in a fight with Trequa Thomas, said Michael. Michael? yelled Zane. What? Oh no, not my baby. I'm about to raise sand, yelled mom. Mom, don't. I already made that psycho's list. I don't need the situation to be even worse, protested Zane. You let that illiterate punk beat you up, asked Vatani. Hey, watch it, Vatani. Him and Michael were just trying to get my basketball back from Trey Quill. The dude is grande y loco. Big and crazy, said Jose. Well, something's got to be done. Because what he did was assault, said Mom. Zane thought to himself. He was too ashamed to tell his mom and sister the details of the incident. But if he did and Traquel found out action would be done to him, his whole gang would beat him down. Just drop it. Let's get some peroxide on these wounds and a hot bath going so I can heal up before school. Mrs. Archer sighed in frustration and disappointment. <sighs> All right, son. But hear me out. If something like this happens again... That Trey Mill or whatever his ghetto name is will have to fight me, as God is my witness. Zane sat on the couch in silence because he knew his mom didn't play around and was all action. Michael and Jose bought him his food, while Vatani got the first aid kit and treated his bruises and the cut on his knee. Ah, that burns! I can't stand that! hollered Zane. No, quit whining. It's the only way to keep the scars from scabbing, said Vatani. 
This wouldn't have happened if you had just let me stream my game. Hey, I have a YouTube channel too. It was my turn to play the Xbox. We had an agreement. Michael and Jose stood and watched the two argue. I know where this is going. It's getting late, so we better go, said Jose. Are you kidding? I love it when these two go at it, replied Michael. <sighs> Vamanos. And thanks for backing me up, guys. Even though I feel lame for needing it. Don't swear it, amigo. Draco would get what's coming to him and... Ow! Ugh, all you men with such fragile egos, Makvatani. Michael rolled his eyes. Anyway, see you soon, bud. Adios, said Jose. The two walked out of Zane's house with the sound of him screaming in agony from the peroxide sponge his sister gleefully applied to him. See, ah! You're enjoying this, aren't you? A little, Patani said smugly. As he ate his spaghetti, Zane began to think hard on how he was going to handle his situation with Bull when school started. I better be careful of how I handle things from now on. Hopefully 7th grade won't be a headache. <laughs>